But uh, yeah, Halloween is fast approaching, and I thought rather than all the ghosties and the ghoulies, we can talk about some of the unexplained stories of Gloucestershire. And one of the things that keeps cropping up um, are the big cats, the stories of the big cats, these sort of panther-like creatures that apparently uh, roam Gloucestershire's countryside. So I thought, I want to find out a little bit more about this. So earlier in the week, I went to Hempstead, and I caught up with Frank Tunbridge. I've been following these big cats in, in, this, in Gloucestershire for maybe the past 25 years. I'm a naturalist anyway, so I study all forms of British wildlife and American, Indian, African wildlife. So I know all the species and how they react and their behaviour, etc. But I find it so fascinating that these big cats can be living amongst us mm. here now, mm. um, quite unnoticed most of the time. Um, just as they do in Johannesburg and Mumbai, in the bigger cities, they're there. And they live over there in those areas. I spoke to a couple of South African guys recently, and they say, we've got urban leopards like you got urban foxes and they just scavenge on the bins and they're very opportunistic leopards are we think we don't know what these animals are out there we just do not know because until we come up with a specimen we can only speculate so we can only um compare them with the species we know which are like leopards pumas mm. etc and the closest they come to are leopards and leopards are the most abundant big cat in the world they live anywhere but the leopards, what are they doing here? Because it's, it's a freezing cold October day when we're That's talking. right. Um, 90 people like something different. Everyone likes a different car, a different house, they like a different breed of dog, different breed of cat. They, people like something different. So in the night, before 1970s, around about up to 1970s, you could buy anything, any, any ex-animal. Exotic animal trade is still very large. I mean... I was buy a lion at Harrods and things yeah, like that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, I remember well. You could buy you could buy a, a, a puma cub out the Exchange and Mart mm -hmm. in about 1970 for 250 pounds. No questions asked. They don't want to know where you keep it. They just want the money for it. Now people are buying all the exotic animals, especially big cats, were quite easy to get hold of. Um, and so they're keeping them in their backyards, in their council flats even, <laughs> um, and such like. And of course, what happened, the government didn't really worry about it, because there's no safety issue. Until 1974, in Brighton, they had a carnival procession, and it's a big ti a young tiger, it's about the size of a Great Dane, held by two guys with a chain, and um, a boy ran out across the road to his mother, and a tiger jumped on the boy, prey reaction, and mauled him quite badly. And they got it off, and of course the government introduced this guy and Dangerous Animals Act in 1976. Yeah. So everyone then had to comply with it, which is some, something like, if I remember rightly, £1,500 um, licensing fee. It was a lot of money in those days. And, or, and secure accommodation, something like the gun laws. Um, or dangerous dogs now. And of course people couldn't afford it, and so rather than see their prized pet destroyed or no one wanted them, circuses, zoos, got plenty of them, they just let them loose in the English countryside. And they're proliferated since then, bred, and they are now spread right across England. And this is where we get them from, this, and this is, is where, where we see it. Well, which is what, this is a consensus of opinion. I think, you know, even if it's not all of them, this um, contributed greatly to the numbers we got here now. Mm. Is there a community of, of, of people that, that are, are sort of tracking this, a bit like you? Um, I know most, I, well, I know nearly all of them across the country. And normally, the strange part about it is we get there's different guys in different areas and so it's no good sort of running all over the country trying to find them because you've got to know the area where you are know the, know the terrain know uh, the habitat of these animals and i concentrate in stroud area and also in gloucester here where i live and mm. um, there's a guy down the forest of dean i know very well he covers that area there's one up in liverpool i know there's one in um, um dorset and all these guys all over the over the country. There's always in 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 every county in the country. It's going to be one or two guys that, like myself, follow these big cats. You see, mm. there's yeah. some places that they don't go. I no, say, well, was it was it countrywide then? It, it's countrywide from Scotland right down to Cornwall, as oh. I just showed you that photograph. That one. I've got Bob a photograph here yeah, of, of, uh, of one spotted on Bodmin Moor. Yeah. That looks more lionish. It does. We don't know what it is. It's really, it looks very like a lioness. It does. Yeah. That's the. We think it could be a puma or a puma type. But looking at it, it's got all the characteristics of a lioness. Well, Bodmin Moor is a massive place. And the guy who saw that has got holiday flat, holiday cottages on there. And he thought that someone just dumped an old duffel coat down. He'd gone out to have a look at it. And this, this thing comes out along grass. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> right. yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So where we're standing now... Here right, in Hempstead. Yes. In Cascalot Way. One was seen by the milkman who covers this area. Um, well, two were seen in the area, but this particular one was seen 
maybe 50 yards, 75 yards from where we're standing. What's it doing in an urban area? Then? Doing in an urban area, because now the weather's got a bit of chill here, like you said. Um, during the summertime, uh, spring, you've got loads of young animals about, young deer, and deer are their preferred prey. These big cats prefer deer. Deer, there's a lot of meat on it, lasts them a long time. Um, one big effort, kill, pulling down and killing the deer, will save them a lot of effort chasing, catching rabbits, pheasants, etc., mm. which they also live on. Um, and so there's quite a lot of deer around this area. There's deer been spotted up on the tip at Hempstead there. Um, but it's not so much after deer. This time of the year, when you've got all the young animals that are growing up a bit, where it's easy to catch you in the summer, like young deer, rabbits, etc. They're naive and big cats and foxes, etc. and grab them easily. But now it's got a bit colder. A lot of the stuff is harder to catch for them than natural prey. So they tend to, just like foxes, become opportunistic and go around the gardens. Yeah. People put food out for badgers. They put food out for hedgehogs, which are on the, are hibernating now, or on the way to hibernation. Um, and they also um, put food out for birds, of course. Mm. And of course, and foxes. And these animals just come along and they just sort of skirmish from through the gardens. Frank Tunbridge, who is, who's been on the trail of big cats uh, for many a year now. We'll hear more from him tomorrow, but uh, he sort of told me a little bit that they have been sort of spotted, as you heard there, in the, uh, in the Hempstead area, and uh, in and around Minchinhampton, and in and around Stroud as well, the Stroud area. Have you spotted anything? Have you seen, have you spotted anything that resembles a big cat? And don't take my words literally there. Yes, I've got a rather tubby tabby. None of that, thank you. Um, in all seriousness, have you spotted anything? You think, that's a, that's a bit of a whacking great cat. That's huge. 01452 307575. Or text gloss followed by your message to 81333. Because as Frank was telling me, you know, more and more people are seeing these things. And um, they're sort of out and about in the world, not harming you. You're not going to harm them. They just sort of you know, living, living out of town, as it were. 01452 307575, or text gloss followed by your message to 81333. Have you ever seen anything resembling a big cat in and around your part of Gloucestershire? And uh, we'll pick this up again tomorrow. 15 minutes to four, so it's unexplained Gloucestershire week. Rather than the ghosties and the ghoulies, we've been looking at the lights in the sky and the big cats. Frank Tunbridge has been on the trail of big cats for over 20 years now. And I caught up with him earlier in the week at Hempstead, where he was telling me about a few sightings. I've got reports from gamekeepers um, in the country areas who've actually seen adult ones with cubs. Um, I don't think they're breeding that much because they tend to regulate their, their, their offspring according to what prey there is, sort of thing, just like the lynx does in Sweden with snowshoe hair. Mm. If they get a bad year and not, and not so many snowshoe, snowshoe hares are around, um, the, the female lynx only has a couple of cubs instead of, say, three or four. And so this over here. Um, I think they maybe miss a couple of years when they don't even breed at all. But they are, they are because otherwise, I mean, the duration of their life must be about, I don't know, 15, 20 years maybe maximum, these big cats. So they've been around 40 years. Mm. So they've got to be obviously breeding as well. It's important to remember, it is very rare to be able to see one as well, isn't it? Well, when you say rare, it's very rare in Africa, in, in Africa to see a leopard. You can't just walk out into Africa and see a leopard. A lot of stuff on television, you see, this takes months and months to get... It's just a simple footage on television of, say, a, a lioness pulling them out of zebra. Mm. I was speaking to a guy from the BBC, and he was saying there how difficult it is. People, the end product, product what you see on television, takes yeah. months, maybe oh, years. years. Yeah. Um, people think you can just go to Africa and walk out into get a get a um, walk get a jeep, go out into the bush, and it, it's a big safari park. But it's not like that. You see. No. And it's the same over here. I mean. There's thousands and thousands of deer in this country, apart from the ones that get knocked down the road quite a lot, and people see them early in the morning. How many times, you know, do you actually see a deer with the thousands that are over here, you see? Mm. And foxes. I mean, where we're standing, there's probably about a dozen foxes within about, I don't know, but about sort of two square mile of us, you see? Mm. Yeah, so, and you, you... And most mammals come out at night, and this is why. Most mammals um, are active at dawn, dusk, and night, when they're not persecuted. And I think what it is, these, these big cats have lost their fear of people because they're not being persecuted, and we don't want them persecuted. They've not harmed anyone over the past 40 years or so when they've been out there. Mm. And they're not going to hurt you. But, of course, it's a, it's a notion of thinking, oh, my God, there's a, there's a big black panther in my garden. You know, yeah. I keep my kids here, my little dog, yeah. this sort of thing. But, of course, what you don't know is um, you're not worried about. 
Mm. And there's an instance, this is a fact, this is in South Africa some years ago, in Johannesburg again, they had a travelling circus, and what happened, um, they had a leopard, one of the, exhi one of the um, exhibits, the leopard got away, because there's a big panic, oh, there's a leopard running around Johannesburg, police and dogs and helicopters looking for it. That's what they decided to do in the end, is put four traps out, four big box traps, on the corner of that area where it was. Yeah. In the morning, they had four leopards. So, <laughs> and that's a, so three of those were there all the time, is yeah. it? <laughs> Best place to see these things, then, if you're going to see them at all. Yeah. You mentioned to me Stroud. Where else have you gone? Stroud seems to be a hot spot for these big cats. And I think, studying it all, and I've followed the tracks and trails where they go, and like all animals, they don't just wander aimlessly. All animals and birds, of course, but animals especially. All animals have got territories, and they st stick to the territories. And if you, you find signs like droppings and scratch marks, and, and you can smell the urine, it's quite strong of a cat. You can generally, and also deer kills along the way, you can track where they go. Mm. And um, in Stroud, I think why they're so abundant in the Stroud Valley's areas is because they're mountain deer over there. Yeah. There's deer a lot. I'm getting a deer kill reported to maybe maybe once, twice a month in the area. And, it, and then I follow it up, and I'll skin the deer around the neck to see how it's been killed and also it's been eaten and and the behavior of the animal that's, that did this has got to be a big cat all the hallmarks point to a big cat yeah. they always eat out from behind on the rear and what future for these things then they survive for 40 years why shouldn't they survive for another 40 as exactly. long as we're there to take photos of them and observe as you have been doing and yeah. leave it at that well it's just a proof it's finding the proof I, at the moment i'm working alongside um, um a british uh, feral animal group who's interested in seeing what feral animals out there. And a feral animal is an animal that's once domesticated or and got loose and now living in the wild, you see, and living quite well. Like, like uh, colonies of feral cats, which you get thousands, millions, there's millions of feral cats mm. living over the country. Mm. And of course, and these animals, and we're trying to get obtain footage of these to prove that, yes, they are out there, and we know they're out there. But just like the Snow Leopard program on television some years ago, it took maybe 18 months to two years with loads of trip cameras to get footage of a, of a snow leopard. Yeah. They're so elusive. We very rarely get clear footage of these kind of things, do we? The, oh, of these it. kind of big cats at all. No, no. I don't know if you saw the program about the tigers of Bhutan recently. Well, they didn't even know there's tigers there. A big animal like a tiger, you know, was there. And um, it's so elusive, so stealthy. And only towards the end of the program, using these trip cameras, did they find that there's tigers out there, you see. Yeah. You know, I mean, I feel touch with tigers over here. <laughs> but that I would think, be something. Yeah, but these animals um, are, gen are now, over the sightings that I've received over the years, they've come out to a very uniform type of animal. What I'm trying to say is that, in my opinion, a lot of people say it doesn't happen, but anything can happen in nature. If there's a void in nature, it'll be filled. And I think these big cats are now taking the place of the apex predator in this country. It used to be the wolf, which mm. got um, got eliminated up to 1743, I think the last wolf was killed over here. And of course the wolf kept the foxes down and the deer and everything. But of course, um, there's no wolves, but these big cats that seem to fill that niche. They do chase foxes, they actually kill foxes as well. We come across carcasses of foxes killed by these big cats. Yeah. Um, and they're not harmed anyone at all in that particular time. What we'd like to see is them recognised by the government or official body and then a protection order put on them. So we don't get idiots going out with guns trying to shoot the thing. What do you need to do that, though? Do you need to provide have, um, you know, more well, substantial you need, evidence? Yeah, yeah. You need substantial evidence. You need clear footage um, of these big cats in British Isles. Clear footage. There's lots of hazy footage at distance, misidentification, um, domestic cats, black Labradors. You've only got to ask the police. The police will tell you. They know they're out there. The police have seen them as well, as, um, these big cats. Night officers on night duty have seen them. Um, and people like who are out in the early hours, just like we say, like milkmen, police, etc., security mm. guards. I've had quite a couple of reports from, from security guards on, on the building sites of the cat walking across. You know? And why they're coming into these urban areas, as I said, it's easy pickings for them. People, we throw food away so much nowadays, don't we? You know? And these teenagers just buy some burgers and, and um, kebabs and just throw it down. And of course, this attracts all the animals into the town. Frank Tunbridge, who has been on the trail of big cats for, for ages and ages now, uh, chatting with me in, uh, in Hempstead, where apparently there have been a few sightings. So, so there you go. Uh, whatever you might think, you know, there are photographs out there which, which, which on the face of it are hard to explain. Whether we get any more concrete evidence in due course, who knows?